Man, a lot of spots gonna come down to this work. Um, this work is weighted differently and appropriately so. The in-stadium work is significant, and increasingly so the more stadium exposure you get. And so make no mistake, this is a significant game for a lot of people. It's one of those positions that comes down to this week, the, the starting quarterback job? Yes. Oh, yes. Mitchell Trubisky's job to lose, and he still may lose it to Kenny Pickett, the 20th overall pick in the draft. And look, when they installed Pickett at number three on the depth chart, I was reminded of Ryan Tannehill 10 years ago in Miami. He was number three on the depth chart when training camp began. And by the time the regular season started, he was number one. You don't want to create the impression that the new guy is having anything handed to him. That's not a small hands joke, although now it is. You don't want to alienate people in the locker room who may think that the guy who's there, Mitchell Trubisky, is better. You want to let the guy earn it. And maybe he will. Maybe he is. If he outplays Mitchell Trubisky on Saturday, I think the game is, Lions at Steelers, who knows? Then they have two weeks. I think it's Sunday. Then they have exactly two weeks to figure out who the starting quarterback will be for the trip to Cincinnati. So I thought it was definitely going to be Trubisky. And Chris Sims makes the point, Miles, that, you know, you got some tough opponents right out of the gate. He's got some pretty good defenses. Do you really want to throw Kenny Pickett to the Wolves? But you know what? The Steelers' attitude is our best guys are going to play. And if Pickett's their best option, if that's what Mike Tomlin believes, he's going to play him. Absolutely he will. And look, I – there are probably very few coaches that I would trust to make any decision when it comes to their football team more than Mike Tomlin. You know, I mean, that list is very, very short, maybe like two to three coaches. But I think when you're talking about a quarterback competition, it's not necessarily something he's had to go through. And so now when we've seen Mitchell Trubisky a little bit, we've seen Kenny Pickett a little bit, I don't think any of us anticipated that Mason Rudolph will be a serious part of this competition. It doesn't necessarily appear like he is. Um, I think Kenny Pickett's done some good things out there in these preseason games that we've been able to see. I don't really love putting too much stock into preseason games, but one of the things that Mike Tomlin was talking about even before last week's game was seeing a live pass rush and how that can affect things for Kenny Pickett and how he wanted to get a more, a quote, varsity action. And I think Pickett did a good job of showing that he can handle some of those things. There's a play that I assume we're going to see at some point where he had a guy come right, it's actually right there. He's a guy right in his face. And boom, he throws it down the field to Pat Fryermuth. And I love Pat Fryermuth. I think he's going to be one of these emerging tight ends that we'll continue to talk about. But when you see Pickett able to do that, handle the pass rush, and yet still deliver that accurate ball, that's got to say to Mike Tomlin and Matt Canada, their offensive coordinator, hey, man, I, I think he might be able to handle this if we really give it to him. Processing information quickly, making decisions authoritatively, getting rid of the football. Look, Ben Roethlisberger made a career out of bailing out of the pocket and running left and right, and it worked for him. But I suspect the Steelers find it refreshing if they could have fall into their laps a guy who can make his reads and get rid of the ball without giving everyone a heart attack as he decides to rumble left, rumble right, and maybe get injured, maybe throw a completion, maybe do God knows what. When you have somebody who's going to run the offense the way that it's drawn up and stand in there and not, not try to get out of the way of a hit, go ahead and maybe take a hit from time to time. Now, look, you don't want your quarterbacks to get hit because the more they get hit, the more they get hurt. But that would help pick it. And I've heard Tomlin say things recently that harkened back to some of the things he said earlier as to what he was looking for from Pickett. And Pickett is just checking off those boxes of the Mike Tomlin cliches. And I think at the end of the day, I, I, it all comes down to what Pickett does this weekend. But based on what we've seen, there's no reason to think that all of a sudden he's just going to not be the guy that he's on track to be. And it won't surprise me if he ends up being the week one starter when the Steelers go to Cincinnati. And, and uh, as a result of all of that, um, the offensive rookie of the year odds are fascinating to me because George Pickens has become the darling of Steelers camp. And as I've said before, it's impossible for anyone to really stand out in Steelers camp because it's the epitome of team, not me. But Pickens has still found a way to bust out of that St. Vincent's in, Saint, in, in Latrobe, PA, bubble.
But right now, Pickens has gone from a 50 to 1 long shot to be the offensive rookie of the year. He's now eight and a half to one ahead of Pickett, who was five to one and is down to nine to one. I think if it's that close, I think if the performance actually would put both guys in the running, the quarterback probably gets it because he's going to be throwing the ball to other people than George Pickett's. And, and that's yes. one of the reasons why you never see a receiver as the league MVP. It's always the quarterback who's serving it up for him. So I think that right now, Pickett to me would be the better bet than Pickens, Miles. Well, I think one of the things that we don't talk about enough with the Steelers is just how good that complement of weapons is. I mean, we're talking about George Pickens, but they also have Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Friarmuth, who I was talking about earlier, Najee Harris. Like, if you're going to insert a rookie quarterback into any situation, an offensive line notwithstanding, I, this is a really good complement of weapons for somebody to have if you're going to come in there and be a rookie quarterback and presumably have some sort of training wheels on and try to win games. But, you know, if you're throwing to George Pickens, too, I mean, my gosh, that dude is really impressive, the body control that he has. I mean, the sideline catch there, you had that end zone catch that he had against the, the Seahawks. Like, there are some really impressive things that he has done. And so if he has that chemistry that he's been establishing with Pickett already, like, yo, I they could be a really dangerous duo. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.